Okay, try this again. Uh, lean codes P two nineteen A, I believe. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies or Scotty's Auto Talk. However, you're finding uh, this video or podcast. Uh, like, subscribe, share, tell everybody about me, and ask questions if you have any. Send me pictures or videos, uh, either via text or email. Text is the nine two five four one eight five zero nine six. Uh, you can send me picture messages on there or if you have a video uh, and i'll tell you when there's a good time to send me a video when we get into diagnostic stuff if you need to or if you choose to so this is going to be in reply to uh it is a pretty common question this one is the p219a uh, this fellow jose hernandez on a ram 1500 57 video uh, says looks like a lot of us have problems with the 219a which is a lean code uh, and I'm going to go over how I would take care or figure out what is causing this here lean code. So diagnostics procedure on this is what we're going to be pretty much going over. This should be the same, if not very similar to any lean code, uh, OBD2 codes like a one, a P0171 or P0174. And there might be more. If there is, make sure you comment below and list what uh, code this video or podcast helped you on. Uh, make sure you check out the website, tell everybody about me, and let's go ahead and check out these lean code issues. First, when I get a code, I'm going to switch over to my old computer. That's what I do first. Is it not even on? Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to go on to my computer with my Mitchell On Demand, and this is a very super useful res reference. Uh, this is a much older version when I had my shop a few years ago. Uh, this is the computer I was using back then, has everything loaded onto it. Um, the newer version is a monthly subscription. You could check it out. There should be a link in the description below. But this is where I'm getting a lot of this information. And as well as mechanics at shops get their information too. So just looking up a 2013 Ram 1500, uh, this code here. First, I'm always going to check for a TSB for any code I get. On here, you could go to the TSB section. I looked it up. There was no TSBs for this code uh, loaded into this one. So that doesn't mean there isn't any TSBs, and I would recommend that you do look for them. If there is any TSBs, make sure you comment below or maybe give us a link so we could check them out as well. Uh, but those are very, very useful. If there's a common problem with a vehicle, it'll become a TSB, a technical service bulletin, and cuts down your diagnostic time a lot sometimes. So check TSBs super super important uh, next you're going to be uh, looking for what causes this issue uh, here on mitchell it lets you know where are we at her 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 219a let's see are we getting there are we getting there oh i went too far sorry you guys so that this lists all the codes and possible uh, causes and what makes the light come on or activate the lean code. We're going to go over this 219A, which is an air fuel ratio cylinder, cylinder imbalance bank one. Uh, here it tells you the operation of it. The newer systems use air flow ratio sensors rather than oxygen sensors. And what an air fuel ratio does is it measures your stoichiometric air fuel mixture, which should be 14.7 to 1. Uh, that's the perfect mix mixture with the perfect combustion. Uh, so your computer tries to keep you there at all times. What the, your oxygen sensor or air fuel ratio sensor does is tells the computer what is coming out of the engine so it knows how to control the fuel going in. It'll um, control the pulse width of your injector or maybe the pressure of injector. I'm probably wrong on that part. But it ingest, it, the computer adjusts your injector uh, according to how much fuel it should be giving. It uses the oxygen sensor air fuel ratio sensor to get that information. So if your computer has a problem with one of your air fuel ratios or oxygen sensors, you'll get a possible 219A or a P0171 or a P0174, depending on what side of the engine you're working on. The 171 is a bank one, 174 is a bank two, left or right, depending on what kind of vehicle you're on again. Um, so that is what it does or why it's on the vehicle. Uh, when does the code, uh, when is the code monitored? When is the monitor monitored? What causes uh, the monitor to be activated? 
That's when the engine coolant temperature sensor sees a greater temperature than 70 degrees. So like a normal warm startup, not a freezing cold day or a really hot day when the engine running for 90 seconds. And when your RPM is about 1,000 to 2,700 RPM and an engine load of 90, 30% to 90% in flex fuel vehicles. So maybe that's not the most important part, but I guess idling when you start it up is when this code gets set. Um, you could get other codes, like I said, 171, 174. And all these codes could be caused by a lot of the issues right here. And again, this is how I would be going over my diagnostic to figure out what's wrong uh, or causing these codes. First, the oxygen sensor itself. Is there something wrong with the sensor? Can I see any visual problems with it? Uh, if not, I'm going to be looking for wiring. I'm going to be checking the wire to the pigtail, make sure I got a good connection, make sure rodents haven't eaten away at it. Just visually look at what I'm starting off with. So I have a lot of videos that cover uh, locations of uh, components like this, your oxygen sensors or air fuel ratio sensors. And those videos are to give somebody a place to start on their diagnostic or repair on just where the component is. It's a huge help on the start of the diagnostic and repair process is just knowing where the component is. It's a huge help, trust me. So make sure you check out my video library. I have a ton of videos on emissions components locations. So check them out. Uh, check out scottyshobbies.com. Uh, tell everybody about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after I've visually looked at the sensor and I know which sensor is bad or I'm assuming both sensors might be giving you an issue if this code's coming up because it doesn't refer to one bank or the other. It just says, uh, actually, did I just lie to you guys? I did. This is a bank one. So I'm more focused on the bank one side of this whole procedure. So this is more for a 171. And if you had a P0174, that would be your bank two. Let's see. Now I just confused you guys. Like everyone's like down thumbs. Hopefully not. Let's see if what the bank two code is. Uh, this one's cooling system performance. Yeah, the 219B, that is for cylinder imbalance bank number two. So if you had a 174 or a 219, that's going to be both on bank two side. So, uh, Look for a firing order diagram for your vehicle if you don't know which side is bank one or bank two when referring to those codes or check Mitchell. Uh, uh, there's lots of, of reference points out there you could find to find your firing order and which side is bank one and bank two. So make sure you're focusing on the right side. So again, lean code, that's what we're looking for. We've made sure the sensor itself is good. Now we're going to go a little bit further into detail on what could be the problem if it visually looks good. Next, I'm gonna turn the vehicle on. I'm gonna listen for, make sure everything sounds good. I'm not gonna find any exhaust leaks or vacuum leaks. Either one of those could give you this code too. So a exhaust leak that is before the oxygen sensor or your air fuel ratio sensor on this side that's giving you this code could cause this problem. If you have like a, uh, what is it, those air injection for emissions. If you have an air injection pump that's faulty, and I believe that injects before your oxygen sensor. That could give you a code. Uh, EGR that injects before O2 sensor. Uh, that could cause this code. So make sure everything on the exhaust prior to the oxygen sensor and out of the engine is good. That's yeah, all sealed up. You have no exhaust leaving the exhaust system or oxygen being sucked in. You don't want anything to mess up the air fuel mixture getting to the sensor. That's my first thing. Then all that looks good. Hopefully you find something because that's the easiest thing. Next is going to be uh, checking my the vacuum system or the intake system. Make sure I have no vacuum leaks around the manifold. Make sure all my boots, my grommets, hoses, everything are nice and tight. Make sure I have the boot uh, going to my air fuel, air fuel, <laughs> air filter, uh, or mass airflow if I have one. Make sure everything is nice and tight. You want air, all the air going into the engine to be monitored. So if you have any vacuum leaks uh, that's past the mass airflow sensor, um, a MAP sensor usually can adjust with a, a very, very minor vacuum leak. But when it gets big, then you're going to have a, a, a problem uh, when it can't adjust the pressure. So a MAP system is a little bit harder to find, but look for vacuum leaks anywhere on the engine. Make sure those are all sealed up. Uh, if you have a question 
this would be like a, the opportunity to send me a video or upload a video to YouTube and tag me in it, send me a link or uh, um, an email or something. Just let me know that here's my video. When I get a chance, I usually dedicate a day a week to this. And uh, I'll look at it and see if there's something I could recommend. So you're like, hey, I have this code. Listen to this. Sometimes I'm like, what the heck? I can't hear anything. But th it's surprising how often I'm like, okay, check this out. And they hit me up and they're like, oh, yeah, that was it. So it's kind of surprising. But if you think there's a useful video or something like that, send it to me. I'll try my best to help you out. I'm sorry I don't get to everybody or everybody's answers, but I'll do my best to get you on that one. But back to finding a lean code. Uh, now that we've made sure that your exhaust leaks are all sealed up, your vacuum systems or your intake system, I should say the vacuum uh, in the intake manifold is all sealed up. Uh, so we got everything looking good on that. Then we're going to check and make sure the map sensor itself is looking good, proper, nice and clean. Uh, that should give you a different code if your map sensor is, is giving you the problem. I would see your link code and a map sensor code, I would think, but map sensor could be a little bit faulty and giving you this uh, code as well. Another horrible thing, well, before we get there, engine coolant temp sensor. If the coolant temp sensor isn't working properly, it is a very likely cause to this code and a lot more code. So if you run into any problems, oh, and your monitors won't set too. If your uh, engine coolant temp, temp sensor is faulty, Good luck setting your monitors. Just saying. Uh, but a, so if your temp is bad, it's not getting normal operating temperature or you're staying a little bit past halfway and that's bad, uh, that could be giving you this code as well. So going down your trouble tree a little bit further, engine coolant temp sensor. Now, all that looks good. This is your worst case scenario is a engine mechanical. So that could be something on internally not giving a proper seal, like an oil ring going bad, or a piston ring going bad, sorry, uh, or maybe a, a very minor uh, coolant leak into a cylinder uh, could be causing that. Um, there could be a few engine mechanical issues that you won't be able to find externally uh, that could be causing this, but hopefully you don't get that far. And even before I would start checking for that, I would jump to even further down the list they're given right here. Should have checked that out, I guess, before making the video. Uh, your fuel pressure regulator, I would check way before anything engine mechanical. Uh, if everything checks out on the exhaust, the vacuum, uh, map sensor, engine coolant temp, uh, even before engine coolant temp and map sensor, your air fuel, sorry, your fuel pressure uh, could be giving you all of these problems, especially if you have a fuel pressure regulator dedicated to each uh, bank. If you have a fuel pressure re regulator on bank one and on bank two, and you're getting a code for just bank one, maybe that fuel pressure regulator is going bad. Make sure it's got good vacuum. Some of them are internal. I don't even know how to check those, but Google it. There's a ton of information out there on how to check that type of stuff. And lastly, on the list right here is the PCM is just bad. It's not being able to interpret information that it's given. Hope that's not the case for you. Uh, the mechanical and PCM, those are your most expensive repairs that you're going to run into with these codes uh, and hope that's not the case for you. If this video helps you out uh, on finding these issues or if you need more direction, make sure you hit me up. But if this video helps you out on going through the uh, diagnostic process on a lean condition, make sure you comment below with the year, make, model, engine size of what the vehicle was you were working on also what you found and maybe if you did check for tsbs or anything like that what you found in that realm as well uh make sure you like subscribe and share check out scotty's hobbies check out all of my newer sponsors links in the description for cool stuff and again send me a message 925-594 that's the wrong number 925-418-5096 that's going to be uh, Scotty's Hobbies, and you could ask away, send me a text message, send me a video, uh, let me know. Tell everybody about me. I'll see you on the next hopefully helpful podcast or, what is this, a video? A YT podcast, I guess. Thanks for watching, you guys.